What's up YouTube family, it's Jordan Criddle. I am back with another video. Today I am mixing a record for my boy XV featuring John Gibbs and the song is called Ambrosia. This is a record that's going on XV's album that he is currently working on with Mike Summers who's producing it and uh, yeah, I am mixing the record so excited about that. This is a single that's coming off the record and I want to walk you guys through the vocal chain that I used on the hook. So the hook is sung by John Gibbs. It's an R&B vocal and I want to talk you guys through that chain. So this is a this vocal chain is something that is loaded in my template. It's something I use on majority of the records that I do, but figured I would walk you guys through that so that way you guys can see it because it has been a minute since uh, I've showed you what EQs I'm using, what compressors I'm using, what DSers, what, whatever, what's my mindset, what's my process, why I make the moves that I make, and so forth. So I know that there's a lot of these videos online, but my process has changed quite a bit over the years, so figured I would talk you guys through it. So let's hop into Pro Tools. I did mix this record in Pro Tools, um, so let's check it out. So first I'm gonna go ahead and play the record and let you guys hear where it's at right now. There's also a group of background vocals, but I'm not gonna play that. I'm just gonna focus on the lead for the, for the sake of this tutorial. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and solo the vocal so that way you guys can hear it. Um, I'll play it with the processing and then I'll t remove all of the, the plugins and let you guys hear the dry, the dry version as well. Feels good. Let me know I saw you mind. I'll make it real good. Yeah, girl, I'ma take my time. Uh, uh, oh, it tastes so sweet, I like ambrosia. All right, so now I'm gonna remove all of the plugins and let you guys hear just the dry vocal. Feels good. Let me know I saw you mind. I'll make it real good. Yeah, girl, I'ma take my time. Uh, uh, oh, it tastes so sweet, I like ambrosia. One thing that you are hearing right now is the parallel compression that I have, um, both my lead vocal uh, on the verse as well as the lead vocal on the hook running through. And that's really just an 1176 followed by a limiter. Little quick rant, it, it used to be the L1 limiter. Right now the L1's not working for me. You guys already know about waves and the update plan and like all that. And ever since I got an M1 and um, updated Pro Tools, some of my waves plugins work, some of them don't. And it's annoying to think that I'm gonna have to go in and pay for plugins that I've already paid for. But that's a, another topic, another video, not gonna get into it. So the parallel chain is the 1176, um, also with a limiter running behind it. I'll show you guys what that looks like. Feels good. Let me know I saw you mind. I'll make it real good. Yeah, girl, I'ma take my time. Uh, uh, oh, it tastes so sweet, I like ambrosia. So yeah, I use parallel compression just to make the overall delivery, the overall performance just a little bit more consistent without squashing the peaks and the dynamics of the vocal, without killing it, right? It's just a signal that's super squashed, super level, but you blend in underneath. Um, plus it's helping me out, it's giving me a lot of volume in, in this case as well. Okay, so let's focus on the individual track itself. The only plugin, here's the individual track and I've got it routed to this hook box. Okay, hook box aux track or sub. And um, on the individual track itself, the only plugin that I've got is the lo-fi. I, I like to use lo-fi just to lower the sample rate a little bit. I feel like it gives me a little bit of just texture and it makes it feel, it makes the vocal feel just like not so clean right off the bat. Um, I like to use this a lot. I actually picked this up from Jason Joshua, I believe, and really just to use, you know, a lot of a lot of people nowadays are recording at home through a basic mic, through a basic, um, very clean, transparent interface straight into the computer. So I feel like this gives the vocal a little bit more character, like it was running through, you know, a pre or just more outboard gear, right? So um, I usually just bring the sample size down to 15 bits and here's the difference. Feels good. 
Let me know what's on your mind. I'll make it real good. Yeah, girl, I'ma take my time. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, it tastes so sweet, I like ambrosy. So this vocal is already pretty, pretty bright and pretty sizzly on the top end. I feel like this just adds a little bit of weight, kind of kind of rolls off the top end a little bit or at least calms it down just a little bit and adds a little bit of a bump to the body. So the first plug-in on the actual aux is going to be a de -esser. The top end on this vocal is pretty bright. It's um, a little brittle, right? And so just really just trying to calm that down. Feels good. Let me know I saw you mind. I'll make it real good. Yeah, girl, I'ma take my time. Uh. So on the first de -er of a track, a lot of times I'll, I'll squash it almost like to the point where the artist has a lisp. Um, I'm doing that really just trying to even out the, the top end, knowing that I'm going to probably add some back. And even if I don't, because actually I'm not doing a lot of EQ on this vocal, but compression is going to naturally make the vocal brighter as well. So I'm going to be able to get that top end back and make sure the artist, make sure my boy John doesn't have a lisp in the record. Yeah, that first de I, I, I tend to I tend to kill it. I tend to squash it. So next, we've got my favorite SSL plugin, and it's the actual SSL plugin from Solid State Logic, and I just love this plugin to death. Um, I tend to EQ quite a bit with it. I didn't on this record just because I felt like the vocal was already bright, was already present, but I love pushing, I love pushing the EQ on this plugin. So if you don't have it, I'm not trying to be the guy to talk you into getting plugins, but I do use this plugin on every single record, on vocals, drums, like literally everything. I use this plugin a lot. So in this case, all I did was roll off a little bit of the bottom end around 77 Hertz and then also the top. So I, I low passed it down to 17 K. Um, again, just trying to get rid of some of that sizzle at the top. And then um, looks like I did a low end shelf around 250 rolling off about 2 dB. So here is before. Feels good. Let me know I saw you mind. I'll make it real good. And here's after. Feels good. Let me know I saw you mind. I'll make it real good. Yeah, girl, I'ma take my time. Uh, uh, oh, it tastes so sweet, I like ambrosia. Yeah. I feel like this controls it just a little bit more, just rolls it off a little bit, and then kind of clean, cleans up the bottom end of the vocal a little bit, right? So that's the SSL. So next is going to be um, my main compressor that I use, and I use this a lot as much as my CPU will let me let me get away with it, but it's the L-Ray, okay? So with this, I'm going with a fast attack, fast release, really just trying to smooth out the that to smooth out the dynamics, control the the peaks a little bit. Um, but this this plugin, I'm gonna get a lot of volume out of this plugin, and you'll hear just like a thickness. This I love this this compressor because it just adds a lot of body, a lot of just weight to the vocal. Feels good. Let me know I saw you mind. I'll make it real good. Yeah, girl, I'ma take my time. Uh, uh, oh, it tastes so sweet, I like ambrosia. Yeah. All right, so obviously a level jump there, but hopefully you guys can hear just the weight that it adds and just the the low mids uh, thickness that I'm able to get by pushing this compressor. All right, so next is going to be Old Faithful, the Pro Q3, who, who mixes a song nowadays without this plugin? I swear you're gonna see it in everybody's tutorials at this point, right? But just a little bit of cleanup work in some areas that I thought were harsh, areas that I thought could be uh, controlled just a little bit. Feels good, let me know. Make it real good. One time. Uh. Oh, it tastes so sweet. I like it, bro. Feels good. 
Let me know what's on your mind. I'll make it real good. Yeah, girl, I'ma take my time. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, it tastes so sweet. I like it, bro. So hopefully you can hear that. It just makes the vocal feel a little bit smoother. Um, kind of that 3K range tends to pop out and it's just like a super annoying frequency. And then again, the top end of this vocal is just a little brittle, um, a little sizzly. So just trying to control that. Next is going to be the MV2. So here's a Waves plugin that I did uh, pay for the update. Bruh. But I love this plugin because it's it is another plugin that allows me to get just a little bit more consistency. I really use this on the low level just to be able to bump up the low level of the signal. So anything that I feel like, anytime I feel like the vocal is dipping a little bit, um, a lot of times you're gonna get a lift out of your parallel compression, but this is just another uh, little assistant that helps with that as well. Feels good. Let me know what's on your mind, I'll make it real good Yeah, girl, I'ma take my time uh, uh, Oh, it tastes so sweet All right, so moving uh, down to my, my last two plugins on the chain So next is going to be the multiband by Fab Filter So um, I use this on every single vocal um, and I pretty much use this same setting on every single vocal and may just tweak it to get the threshold or the reduction that I want. So um, here's before and after. Feels good. Let me know what's on your mind. I'll make it real good. Yeah, girl, I'ma take my time. Uh, uh, oh, it tastes so sweet. I like ambrosia. Yeah. Feels good. Let me know I saw you mind. I'll make it real good. Yeah. It's really just to control the frequencies that may be popping out and just get a much more consistent uh, performance throughout the record, right? Um, I love boosting the bottom end of it a little bit and still getting, I don't know, two to three dB of gain reduction out of it, but boosting a little bit just to have a consistent bottom end and then controlling the mid range, still trying to control the top end of this vocal. Um, I just love what it does. And I feel like this plugin really just makes the vocal dance and feel alive, but also just stay like controlled in the mix, right? Without it popping out or frequencies jumping out and things of that nature. So yeah, plugin that I use on every single vocal. And then last but not least, so like I said, on the first DSer, I squash it quite a bit, but I feel like my boy John no longer has a lisp, right? And we're still a little sizzly, so I'm just gonna finish with the Pro DS. Feels good. Let me know I saw you mind. I'll make it real good. Yeah, girl, I'ma take my time. So just a little bit, a little bit of control there. So let's hear the vocal in the mix before and after So now let's create just a little bit of ambience around the vocal and make this thing really shine. So, okay, so I've got a few reverbs going on um, that I'm gonna bring in, short delay, um, but I'm actually not gonna spend too much time talking about them, but I am going to talk a little bit about this track that I created that's really doing the, the major lift as far as creating the ambience around the vocal. And just something I wanna share with you guys so that way you guys can always um, remember to just get creative with uh, your mixes and you know, don't just have a bunch of oxes that you use on a regular basis and you just you know, blindly turn them up and you don't really, really ever like do anything to um, that specific or tailored for that specific song, right? So this is, um, this track here is called Hook Effects. It's literally just the lead vocal and I duplicated it and I'm running it through a chain. So I'm gonna play this as well. Feel good. Let me know 
you real good. Yeah, girl, I'm a. Okay, and you can see here I've written in um, a little bit of automation, just volume automation. So what is this, right? So it's a super crushed and squashed version of the vocal. So I'm gonna mute all of this so you can hear what's happening. So here is just the vocal. Feels good. Let me know what's on your mind. I'll make you real good. Yeah, girl, I'm gonna take my time. Okay, so this is again just a squashed version. So I've got crushed to the max, crunch uh, just a little bit, made it darker, and um, yeah, just squashed it, right? Next, we've got this chorus effect. Feels good. Let me know what's on your mind. I'll make you real good. Yeah, girl, I'm gonna take. So just to spread the effect out a little bit. Going to the Echo Boy. Feels good. Let me know what's on your mind. I'll make you real good. Yeah, girl, I'm a All right, so we've just got a quarter note delay. Nothing special here on the tube tape setting. Um, pushing the saturation just a little bit. So nothing too special, but the key is I've got the dry wet knob all the way to wet, right? I only want the delay signal. I don't want any of the dry signal on this. We're feeding that to the Valhalla reverb. That's how we're getting the depth. That's how we're getting the dimension. We're getting the space, right? And then um, to an EQ. So rolling off some of the low mids and some of the top. So let's play that in the mix. Now let's add that track in. All right, guys, hopefully that was helpful. If so, definitely give the video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll be back with another video soon. Peace.